Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and I think that the ability of people to create a stable, certifiable, personal piece of money so they don't have to borrow it from banks is going to be the greatest liberation revolution in human history, and it all starts with you and your own printer. Back in 1979, I had a vision of what it would be like to live under a banking system with no interest. And since then, I've made it a mission to try and reprogram the bank's malfunctioning computers and restrict them to a pure service charge and abolish the interest charge. Uh, I've asked the Supreme Court several times. They said no, but... <clears throat> In 1984, article, Green Dollar Trade Better Than Barter. And it was about a new system out in the Comox Valley, B.C., started by Michael Linton, which allowed people to have a directory of members' goods and services offered and wanted, and everybody started with an account at zero, and they could telephone the exchange and say, please transfer 50 bucks from my account to Fred's account today. And then that's how it was done. Remember, businesses can take part cash, part green. They can cover their costs in cash, and they can take their profit in green. Now, I thought that was such a great idea, and that that software should be spread around the world, that I financed the development of the Let software. 20000 bucks back in 1984 was one-third of my whole gambling bankroll. And, uh, but... It put Let's out as freeware into the world, and it is now spread around the world. Now, in many countries, they, for instance, have in Britain, they pay themselves six green pounds per hour. In the United States, Ithaca hours, they pay themselves ten green dollars per hour. In Canada, we pay ourselves twelve green dollars per hour. In um, Germany, it's 20 green marks per hour. In France, it's 60 green francs per hour. But between countries, we trade hours. So back in 1999, I went to Europe and I paid for 39 nights out of 40 with an IOU for a night back in Canada worth five hours. Now, businesses and professions can charge more hours per hour. That's a given. It's a free market. And uh, youth get the same hour as any volunteer does. They do the same jobs as adults, so they should be paid the same. And they're going to honor that one-hour bill as 12 Canadian or 10 American longer than will be alive. So taking the hours from youth are probably our surest and longest investments. Now, during the 1999 tour of Europe on Let's, I was introduced to the Jure concept. Those people found it a pain to have to call the exchange every time to record every transaction just so that everybody could see your record and make sure you're not a bum trying to take advantage of them. And they said, well, we can do that just the same by taking our accounts and sticking it into a paper bank book. And then when I do a deal with you, I'll sign yours, you sign mine, and I can show people all the deals I've done. I'm not a bum. Uh, I decided I was going to put it on the internet. I was going to take my bank book and I was going to put all my transactions online so that I didn't have to carry around a paper one with me. Anybody could go check. So I'll show you that account right now. It's over right now at my uh, Facebook page. Here's my Facebook page. And if you click my about and then you click my um, details about you, up comes these details about me. So basically, it's my UniLets Time Bank account. I offer, oh, casino gambling chips I will sell, translation from French to English, accordion concerts, and accommodations in Canada with me and many of my friends. Wanted, well, I always want accommodations when I travel, and history books, and translation from English to any language, auto repair. And these are hours earned I'm proud of. Now, if you're a volunteer, you put those hours down. You've been a volunteer at the Humane Society for 20 hours a week for the last 10 years. Well, that's, a, you know, 
That's 1,000 hours a year times 10 years. Put down 10,000 hours of community service I gave. And on your record, people can see that. So I play accordion in old folks' homes, and I've been logging when I do my concerts, and uh, I finance the first lets. I put down that 20,000 bucks, and that five bucks an hour, that's worth 4,000 hours. And I finance the $3,000 for the Toronto Let's Laser Printer, and uh, took that in hours. I protested at the Bank of Canada against interest rates. I count those hours I'm proud of. Any other pickets I've participated in, accordion concerts, any volunteer or time spent community service-wise I can rationalize, I will put down on my shingle of achievements. Just to see if you'll take my IOU for a night back in Canada any faster when you see I'm no bum. And the next part is hours spent. And there you can see a list of all the accommodations, like 15 hours for two days and some press release in Helsinki and uh, Sweden and Germany. Hey, 11 countries in 40 days and 39 nights out of 40, I found a let's to put me up. So, uh, and then other things, people help me do things. I pay them prizes if I give a quiz and someone wins it, I give them five hours or something. And uh, so, and then finally this last one, which is issuing my own currency, and I'll tell you about that one later. When I do a transaction, it's reflected on their page. I send them an email, say, okay, I owe you 15 hours. They now post it on their page. John says he owes me 15 hours. So when I come to stay, you know he owes me. Put me up too. And uh, so basically, as soon as I send it and they put it up, it's basically a valid transaction and it's finished. Piece of money's gone and piece of money's retired. E-money. Now, um, again, it's a pain to have to go and input every little, you gave me a ride, here's a two-hour bill. My Lord, what a pain. And that's why many LED systems have started using paper time dollars. Now, the best example is the Argentine Creditos. Here it is. In a working-class suburb of Buenos Aires, hundreds of people newly impoverished by the nation's economic crisis gather several times a week at this disused factory to take part in their own self-help solution to the disaster. This is a barter market, one of thousands which have sprung up throughout Argentina thousands. to fill some of the gaps left by the collapse of mainstream business. Here, trading is carried out using coupons called creditos, which can only be used inside the club. The network of barter markets has become a parallel economy. It's not only homemade clothing and other such goods that are traded in the barter clubs. People exchange food they've produced themselves and even services such as hairdressing, doctors, dentists and psychiatrists. Barter clubs don't pay any tax, but they're tolerated and even encouraged by the government because they act as a safety valve for the volcano of social discontent that's boiling up because of mass unemployment. These women said the barter club is the only way they can feed and clothe their children. I sew and do crochet and sell what I make and the barter club helps me save money for things like paying my household bills. Freeze up cash. This has become a way of life for us. The economic crisis is affecting all of us and this is a way of earning our daily bread with dignity. You can call it money, but that wasn't our intention. We simply use it to represent the value of work. But we aren't going to build a new financial system. Sure you are. Our credits are loaned without interest. That's why. We don't say like the IMF does, I'll lend you 100, but you must pay back 150. No, we lend 100 and we say, pay back 100 in goods, services, or skills that the network needs. So you just have to lend everybody 500 chips and say, give it back in goods and services. Sorting their chips. Making packages of money for new members. It's the only bank note that I have, but there are plenty more, he says. It's worth 20 credits. There's also some worth 10, 5, 2, and 1. 
dinero. ¿sí? Se llama credit. It's not money, it's a credit, a little piece of paper. You can buy what you need, clothing, food. Herramienta. Poker chips. My job gives me pesos, pay my taxes, my rent, etc. With the credits I earn here, I can fill the fridge. I can even afford shoes and clothes. Ruben Rivera says a lot of people come from chronic unemployment or sometimes from the absolute impossibility of ever having access to work. And starting from these modest tables where they put themselves at the service of other people through a product or a service, these people gain fortitude which enables them to hold their own in the global economy more strongly. And as this is the only part of the economy that's actually growing, the way things are heading, Argentina looks like becoming one big barter club. Okay, now their main problem, just like a casino, their main problem is, is verifiability of the chips. When I sign a marker IOU at a casino and they give me their chips as the accepted medium of exchange, um, they got to watch out the chips. Someone might counterfeit them. Well, it's the same thing with these big, big barter clubs because people who want to hurt them or people who want to cheat or steal might want to counterfeit these pesos or these creditos that are usable all over the country now. So, there's another way to fix that too. Now, how have they solved them? Well, they've used serial numbers. Fine, that's acceptable. It helps to identify maybe two in a row or three in a row, right? And then the, uh, but they have a system in the United States called Friendly Favors. And on Friendly Favors, everybody got a checkbook, your own currency, that had your picture on it. And when you signed your IOU, it became like a traveler's check. Everybody else then could use it. And it had your picture right on it. So pretty good ID, pretty good verifiability, and not much you're not going to see many people out of New York City notes in your area if you're in Iowa, right? So it's mainly local people you're going to see on your notes. So, and then in, in Mexico, well, they really wanted to make this a good piece of money. So they said, we're going to, if I give you my note, the next guy you pass it along to, you got to sign it for him too, just like a check. And if you give it to someone else, he's got to sign it too. And that way, 10 guys got to sign that note. So that even if the system explodes, anybody gets that's got 10 people who are going to want to get it back, right? So they had, you know, 10, ex 10 people signing that note, nine co-endorsements, as well as the original guy. And that's a pretty valid piece of money. But it's also harder to counterfeit because there's so many different varied names. So that was the Tlalocs in Mexico City. Of course, you which is passbook to passbook. Well, you're not worried about verifiability. I'm me. I'm holding my passbook. Might even have my picture on it. So Jure doesn't have security problems. Online trading, neither did my online account, right? I can send you an IOU. You post it. I post it. There's no possible way anybody can fudge that. So, now... What's interesting is, with all those signatures, maybe the money collectors someday are going to want these things. You never know, because you might find a famous name on one of them. So, I'm going to incorporate in this new Unilats time dollar paper money, all those features. It's going to be je, person to person, or you run it yourself. It's going to be like friendly favors, solid ID, your Facebook ID. And it's going to have uh, serial numbers, your own. And most people won't be putting that many into circulation, so they won't be that high. Not numbers like this, only like this. And finally, we're going to have three extra endorsers. So the piece of paper is guaranteed covered by at least four people, not just one. But everybody in the network, too, you know what I mean? So the point is, that's how that works. Now... It has interesting ramifications. So we're going to play the uh, Bangla Pesa story right now. It is business as usual inside the Bangladesh slums in the coastal town. 
But this was not the case barely a year ago. The once little known Bangladesh slum was catapulted into national limelight when area residents started using parallel currency notes as the preferred medium of exchange in conducting business. The renewed faith in the vouchers follows assurances from Central Bank of Kenya that the system does not contravene the law. One can use both Kenyan currency and Bangla Pesa to trade or, as most of them have come to prefer, save the Kenyan currency and use Bangla Pesa and use the national currency when buying their wares from outside the area. Even the bad boys who tended to be thieves, they've completely changed and now they're doing business. Bangla Pesa is said to be the first of its kind in Africa, while on the international front, countries which have implemented complementary currencies include Brazil, Switzerland, United Kingdom, France, Germany and the United States. Now, following in the successful footsteps of Bangla Pesa, the county government has since written to its founders to assist roll out a replica of the program in Ghana, Hola and Kibarani areas in the county. Further, they seek to integrate the complementary currency into agriculture, fisheries and sanitation programs in the county. Okay, so the government can use it too. Any group can use it. But it's easier and better if you do it yourself, person to person. So, how do you make your own time dollar note? Here's the format I have used. Okay, you'll be able to go to my site and download a template with 10 of these for the ones, this is, sorry, these are five minutes in Canada, one time dollar. And you'll see there's a date there and you're going to replace your date of issuance. And there's my name. Okay, CA Canada, you can put your country, Brantford, my city, and Ontario, you know, unless the city's unique in Canada, and my Facebook ID, John Termel. And of course, that's my rate. If you're in a different country, like in the United States, I've got a template for them, the two, because they're English and they're so big. And for them, you get six minutes for a time dollar. It's 10 an hour instead of 12 in Canada. So, slightly different template. Same idea. All right, you sign that, it becomes like a traveler's check. I'm going to johntermel.com slash unilets. And there I explain how you can make time dollars now. And down here, make your own time dollars. And that will take you to the page on making time dollars. Here it is. I've got different denominations I've chosen. Green for ones, blue for fives, um... White for one hour bills, 12 in Canada, and red for $50 bills. So you can, and you can have uh, larger bills. I've got them there, though I don't expect to use too many myself. Time dollar CA, that's for Canada. That's the 12 time dollars per hour. And that will open this document in Word. I've also got a PDF if you want that one too. There's my template for Canada. Let's say that you want to change it to John Smith. Well, you see John, John Termel there? That's my Facebook ID. So all you do is you hit Control F to find, and you put John Termel, and that's what you're going to find. Then you hit replace, and you're going to replace with Fred.Smith. Or whatever your Facebook ID is, or you can use your website, or wherever you can post a selfie showing you what your time dollars is acceptable. And then you replace all. So it'll make 60 replacements. That's it. Then you close it and you save it to your name, save as Fred Smith. And that's done. Now I've got them all set. So I then went and I printed out my green dollars, my time dollars. I got my green dollars. I printed up four pages. So that's $40 in ones. I printed up two pages. So that's 20 in sixes. I printed up two pages of one hour bills. That's 20 of them. And then two pages of four hour bills. And those are 50s, so that the total came to 1400 Now, next time I'm going to go somewhere, I'm not going to give the guy an IOU online for two hours. I'm going to sign two hours and give it to him. So, they're dated August the 1st, the date I issued them. Now I'm going to go chop them up. 
when you're serializing these things, this first one here, just put a dash. But when you're doing the 11s, you put 11, put a dash in front of it. And when you're doing 21, put a dash in front of it. And when you're doing 31, put a dash in front of it, just so they can't be changed. And therefore, after they're all cut up, I am then going to go and validate them. So, how do you validate it? Remember I mentioned that post on my online account that said I'm issuing 1,400 in chips? Here it is, again. Now, basically, I'm saying that I'm not going to record every $20 bill I owe in hours on my online account that I have to do by hand. I'm simply going to give them a chip. So I'm taking out 1,400 in chips to handle as many small transactions as possible, and I'm only going to do things I'm proud of to record events or large transactions online. So, I've now got a combination of my online jeu, my online time dollar account, and paper as well for local activities. How do you validate it? Well, take a picture, take a selfie of you and your money. Click and go put it at your Facebook page and announce how many you issued in what denominations from what serial numbers. And can you think of a better validation for your money, your kind of traveler's checks? And these checks will travel. Now, what's interesting is just like nobody can sign your check and cash it without being charged with fraud, no one can sign your time dollar check and try and spend it without being charged with fraud. Same laws apply. So, you're as safe with your time dollar checkbook as you are with your regular checkbook against fraud. Next step, make your wish list. Remember, these are the categories you got to add to your about page at Facebook. The offer, goods and services, it's a chance to say what you want to trade. There's all sorts of different things you can offer, including goods. Now, when we start barter fairs, you're going to want to list all the goods you're bringing to the barter fair so people might see them in advance. So that's what this is for. You make your wish list. Things you got, things you want. Services too. We'll offer and want. Now, the next part is the hours given and the hours received. Well, the first transaction you're going to do is say, I'm taking out 700 bucks in chips. So I don't have to record too many others right now, <laughs> okay? But that's really all you have to do to validate your money. Well, actually, you don't even have to do this because who's going to stiff on 60 hours of labor for 700 bucks? Okay, a few quick suggestions on what you do. You and any group of people who printed up their own time dollars can simply agree to meet at any lot with all your automobiles filled with stuff to barter. They did this in Argentina and Russia when they had their crash in the 90s. It's as simple now as you, soon as you've got a bunch of people who's got their own money who can come out for one of these barter fairs, you can start organizing them in a flash. How about a block? How about a flash block party? You simply say, I'm having a yard sale, and does anybody else want to put out stuff on the same day in front of the yard in my block? And by the way, we're printing up 700 bucks in our money each. You want yours too, so you can make change and deal on that level as well. But you can try and sell for pure cash as well. How about a flash condo yard sale where you simply announce that on this date I'm going to be putting my stuff out and I invite everybody else in the building to do the same. Heck, maybe put it out in front of your area. Now, why does that have a transforming effect on kids who don't have to steal anymore? Well, let me give you an example. If I were to sell some of my goods at one of these fairs and I brought a whole bunch of books with which said, you know, uh, $2, $1, $3 on the spine, and I put a jar out front for people to leave the time dollars. Well, I figure if everybody's walking around with 700 in their pocket, there won't too many be these kids who used to be thieves who are going to steal my time dollars, right? For my books. Now, if I was selling part cash and part time dollars in my jars, two jars, I don't think I could leave my table untended. 
because cash is scarce resource. Time dollars, everybody's got plenty. So I don't think that too many people can be trusted around an untended jar of mammon like they can around an untended jar of sufficient time dollars. So just like those kids don't have to steal anymore when they got lots of time dollars, you can probably put your stuff out right out in the hallway with the price tag there, and when you come back, somebody will left the right number of time dollars. I bet. Not much thievery in our systems we've found over the last 30 years. Uh, now, potlucks. Let's say, well, most single-parent families, the scariest thing to be short on is food. Well, have a potluck. You know, and everybody trades or sells their food or whatever. But at the end, you buy all the leftovers. Put it in the freezer. Okay, and then go around all the time. That's sort of like the Salongo custom. Some Brits, I'm sorry, some Belgium Letzers took back a custom from Africa where one family would host a bunch of other families who all came over and helped fix everything in the place. And at night they had a celebration and I owe you so many hours, so many hours, so many hours, so many hours. And next week they went to somebody else's home. Salongo. You can do that if you have your own currency. Well, time dollars work that way. Now you can pay it with paper instead of having to do it online or in a book like they did. And finally, you can make your own work projects. I mean, just say, I'm going to go clean that park and do four hours every Saturday, cleaning everything in the whole place, and just post it at your page. And sure enough, when you issue dollars, time dollars in exchange for that, everybody's going to take them because they know you cleaned their park. Now, the neatest thing is that your Facebook ID makes this piece of money very secure and stable. The three extra signatures on the back, too. But there's something that deters counterfeiting. Counterfeiters need to have a large, large number of people they can screw all using the same currency. Large millions of notes type stuff to sneak one over and over and over. But I mean, you're going to recognize, you know, Freddy the Freeloader's note come every day. There's one from Freddy the Freeloader. What's going on here, you know? So, because the time currency that you're going to be using in your network is mostly homegrown, well, it's pretty tough to introduce counterfeits and since it's got the three co-signers as well. But I mean, what's this one guy in New York doing? And he, oh, he visited for a week. Okay, understood. Five hours, I get that, you know. But I mean, you, you're you going to be recognizing names from your area on your local homegrown currency, which is the surest clue to being a believer that it's pretty good when you recognize someone else's name or your own. I remember signing that. Right, right, right. Okay, so that's basically how you can now issue your own currency and some of the things you can do with it. But I believe that once, I mean, this is better than bank money because it's less counterfeitable and everybody can do their own. So I believe this is probably going to be the real stake in the heart to the banker's loan shark scam finally after all these years and absolutely stable an hour is always worth 60 minutes any generation in the future you put it an hour they'll give it to you back later but you probably get more for your hour because they got better technology then get it take the kid's hour right now for what you do and later when he takes your hour for what he does he probably does more in the same hour so, anyway, that is how we're going to take a shot right to the heart of the banking system by everybody representing our own collateral with our own chips in our own localities absolutely securely for free. So, I'm ready to accept anybody's time dollars if I can see your picture ID on the internet saying I belong, I'll pay, I'll put back in resources what I spend. And that's so easily done, who's going to steal? Johnny Engineer Termel, knowing that this is the shot to the heart that ends it all. Poker chips. <laughs>